Uh, on the draft general uh, order regarding uh, tasers, uh, to underscore the importance of the community input, uh, the meeting we had at the Hamilton Rec Center uh, on the 22nd of January, we pulled out of that um, 13 recommendations about the uh, order, and of those 13, uh, and you'll think my math doesn't add up, but some recommendations went in two categories. Uh, eight of them were already covered in the order, the recommendations that we received, but we found um, four really good ideas in there and loaded them into the order. I uh, identified three separate tra training issues uh, that uh, will go into the curriculum that uh, trains the officers in the uh, use of the uh, ECW. Um, that said, uh, I'm, I'm glad to afterwards uh, answer any questions or talk to you if you presented last time uh, where your uh, recommendation is and uh, going forward uh, where that might go. Uh, the topic that I wanted to talk about it tonight as well is the, uh, the Crisis Intervention Team Program. Uh, the Chief appointed me as the Crisis Intervention Team Coordinator in December of 2012. That program arises out of Commission Resolution 11-18, uh, which uh, in, in uh, a number of things that it directs, it directs the department to develop a cadre of officers who are identified and specially trained to deal with mentally ill persons in crisis and to deploy those officers whenever possible to calls for service. Uh, also as part of the resolution, there's a mental health working group to collaborate, to develop policy, to seek alternative funding sources, and to leverage the relationships with other members of the city family. The current curriculum for training officers in CIT is 40 hours long. Uh, it is a uh, newer and improved version of a program that was in place some time back, PCIT, Police Crisis Intervention, but it's been updated to include additional curriculum on de-escalation and veterans issues. The results of the training, as sort of a state of the program, are that we have trained 118 members of the police department and certified them as CR CIT members. Uh, currently, they're at all our district stations with uh, percentage-wise 54% on the days, 24 swings, and 22 on midnights. And they're just about equally divided uh, between uh, our Golden Gate Division, which would include uh, the uh, Ingleside and the Terrible Districts, uh, and the Metro Division, which are the downtown stations. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get through tonight without mentioning our partners at the Department of Emergency Management. In the last two weeks, we've been working with them to develop call intake procedures that will identify a call at the call taker point of entry into the system as a CIT appropriate call. And from that, we'll be able to develop good data uh, to uh, you know, assess the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of our CIT program. And finally, uh, the working group that the CIT uh, commission resolution calls for is really a group of and some of the folks I see here tonight are well steeped in uh, the issues around uh, mental illness in, in San Francisco or understand the history and the nature of, uh, uh, of services and gaps in service and uh, we've come together three times in the last month to uh, talk about uh, CIT and, and improving that service and and institutionalizing that service so that, let me say, routinizing that service. Uh, and most recently, we went through an interesting reconciliation process where we took the, um, the various narratives that folks have, depending on their perspectives, and we really threw them out on the table, talked about them in terms of um, setting up a good foundation for the working group and for having a uh, CIT program in San Francisco that is a national model. With that, I will um, pass it on to Commander Ali.